Hey everyone, I'm your average guide Sahil Gogna. Welcome back to another video. So I was getting a lot of questions from you guys to bring someone from the cloud industry in Canada and the request drastically increased ever since I uploaded the video with an IT recruiter in which we got to know that it's currently the most demanding industry in Canada. So firstly, I would recommend you to watch that video with IT recruiter if you want to know how the recruiters process your applications. And in this video, we are going to answer all your questions related to the cloud industry in Canada. So without any delay, let's get started. <laughs> Mahesh bhai, first of all, thanks a lot for your time. This video was pending for a long time and finally we are here recording your experience. Thank you so much, Sahil, for having me and I'm so sorry I'm keep delaying <laughs> because the work was so busy. <laughs> That's not an issue. So, Mahesh bhai, before we start the conversation about the cloud industry, I would like you to introduce yourself to the audience. So, I'll give a brief introduction about myself. So, I'm a non-technical person who started bachelor's in commerce in India and then moved to the US for MBA in finance. So, when I was in India, I started working for the TCS. So I worked for about three years in the TCS, then moved to the US. I uh, did my MBA in finance and minor in IT. So I got an experience and knowledge about the IT stuff. And then did some couple of the project about the contracting position. And then came here in the Canada to do my master's in computer science because I got a great knowledge about the IT stuff in India and US. So I did my master's in computer science, minor in e-commerce. I worked a couple of years in uh, IBM, about two years. There I started actually working about the cloud projects and started learning more about the cloud and getting more interested. Since last one year and two months, I um, started working for the bank. So mm -hmm. I work as a project manager in the cloud technology. So we work in the cloud migration projects right now. It's uh, infrastructure level projects. And Bhavish, since you have mentioned that you come from a non-technical background, so I'm curious to know, like, what was your first full-time job here in Canada and how you landed into your full-time role as a cloud engineer here in Canada? So I came as a student, right? As a student, you came, as you know, Sahil, like there is a bit of struggle. You start doing a part-time jobs here and there. My first job I landed was in co-op from the university. So I work as a blockchain developer. There I get to know about the Internet of Things and the cloud technology. I started working for the AWS projects, uh, e EC2 and all those things, right? So specifically, I was focusing on identity and access management. There I get to know there is a lot of scopes in this industry. There is a lot of shortage in the people about the cloud industry. So that's why once I graduated, I moved to the IBM and I started working with the IBM cloud as well. So you started your journey with the IBM cloud as your first full-time job and then you moved eventually to your current role, right? So in IBM, it's a consulting side. So we started working as a business analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a business analyst, as a consultant, you have a several different projects. So several different clients, several different projects and based on the projects, you work for the client. So one of the, like due to confidentiality, I can't say the name here, but uh, I started working for the cloud migration project for one of the biggest bank in Canada here. Uh, one of the few components, it's called the LDAP and Active Directory kind of thing. And that's given me a lot of exposure about how the migration works and how the user's migration works from the data center to the cloud side. Uh, that experience helped me a lot. Then I did a certification from the IBM Foundation level. I did one certification on AWS and I have one more certification on Oracle Cloud. So the current bank where I'm working, it's called Butterfield Bank. We are doing a big migration upgrading the application side by side as well and uh, we are doing everything on the cloud on the oracle side and what i learned from the several different certification is like the cloud itself is the same thing but every company have a different names mm -hmm. so that's the basic thing and what I can see is that you learned most of the things when you were working full time, right? Yeah. So does it really matter if you go to a university for your master's or you join a diploma course in a college? I think if you learn, if self-learning is the best thing, I would say, because when you go to university or school, they give you one specific course, cloud computing or cloud related, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll try to teach you in three months most of the things. Specifically, like you can learn those things from the YouTube or Coursera, or you can learn from Udemy. I did a lot of reading by myself. Uh, there is a one book called Cloud Computing Migration that helped a lot as well. So I think self-learning play a vital role here than going to university or college. Yeah, university or college will help you for sure to just bring the foundation up. Okay. Other than that, like actual thing is a different than theoretical one. And since you mentioned that self-learning is the important 
part of learning the cloud technologies. So what are the skills that a college graduate or a, you know the new grads they should focus on? So how would you say like how they can approach the industry and how they can develop the skills? So cloud itself is a really big buzzword I would say based on my experience. Uh, if you want to start learning about the cloud and if you are interested in the cloud, there is a lot of shortage about the employees. From the Gartner's recent survey, it says like 39% of companies are struggling right now to have cloud resources, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the two components I say it's the most important is like that working and cybersecurity side. So because those two things are like the one of the key factors. So cloud had a three main components, software as a service, platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. So if somebody is really looking forward to going in the cloud uh, career path, I would say infrastructure as a service where companies are doing the cloud migration, mm -hmm. right? So that, that place, they get like a lot of exposure about their experience and hands-on experience kind of thing. And you have also mentioned the role of certifications in getting a job, right? And yeah. what were the certifications that you did and what, were, what are the certifications that you would recommend the new grads or the students who are right now in university and they're targeting the cloud roles? So most of the time, uh, when I started cloud, I don't know anything about the cloud and I was scared to just jump in the cloud side of it because it was pretty new. Uh, so from the IBM prospect, uh, they help a lot us in the initial stage, like you can go and do the certification. They have like big library where you can go and learn a lot of things. So I started with the foundation uh, level certification on the AWS that helped me to clear my path on understanding how the different uh, components work under the cloud, right? Specifically about the SaaS, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. Those things was not clear to me when initially I started then because based on that you can identify like which career path you want to go for it because software as a service you can take it as an example as a Gmail, right? Mm -hmm. And user use that specific thing but you, they don't know like where is the data farm, how the cloud stuff works on those things, right? So I think if somebody is looking for really going in the cloud, they can start with the foundation certification because they have to know about terms and condition about the specifically cloud technology. And once they get an experience on that, there is a associate level certification, there is a security level certification, networking level certification, specifically related to the cloud, how we can move from the data center to Oracle Cloud and that journey is like one of the most important journey about the cloud migration. And Kumar Bhai, since you have mentioned that uh, there are, there's a shortage of uh, engineers here in the cloud industry. Yeah. So what would you say, like is the industry more open to the freshers or it's looking for more experienced people or would you recommend that the students after graduating they should take some role like the business analyst and then they can move eventually to the cloud positions. So what would you say, is, it, is the industry open to freshers? Uh, yes or no, so I have to be honest with you because com for companies it's pretty much new as well like a lot of time about the cloud there is a lot of consulting companies as well they provide like cloud solution cloud consulting kind of thing right and most of the time companies value with the experienced people on the cloud because this is like a new journey where they want to go but they are not sure how it's going to work out right mm -hmm. but as you mentioned the business analyst or networking analyst system analyst those roles still exist in the cloud side. It's just the name of the cloud, but those components, those experience work on the cloud side as well because the requirement gathering, say for example, right, that needs to happen on the cloud or non-cloud production, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to help. But fresh grad or fresher who wants to join to the cloud uh, journey, right? Certification is the one of the key factors. The first thing is you need to do like AWS or GCP or Microsoft Azure certification. So you have like a clear idea of what we are looking from from the job prospect. And when you were applying for the uh, cloud roles, so what was the general interview process? So were there a lot of technical round or was there just one single technical round? Do they ask any coding or like what's, what are the expectations in terms of technical skills? So. I can comment from my side, like from my specific profile, right? Uh, I started my career from business analyst to system analyst and now I'm a project manager, right? So in my specific role, there is no coding related interviews, but there is a technical interview when I get hired as a system analyst, right? So the interview process, like it's a different from company by company, mm -hmm. right? So some companies are looking for just go for one interview with a technical person and how you do the cloud migration and then it goes from there. But 
I had an interview a couple of and it says like almost about two to three interviews like one with the uh, project manager then technical team and then team lead because what people usually looking for is like cloud and agile both together mm -hmm. because companies are moving to the new methodology agile and they want to uh, also want to do the cloud migrations and uh, cloud update right and I think if they have the agile methodology together they have like every day new release and new uh, production kind of thing so I think that's going to help them a lot but to just conclude that specific question two to three interviews are pretty much there and one round you can expect technical yeah and what what salary can a person of different experience levels expect so are the cloud engineers paid well here in the Canadian market yeah to be honest really well uh, and if you are in Canada, and especially if your audience is like an international student or from local here, right? After several years, you get a permanent residence, you get a project from the US, UK, all over the place because there is a global shortage of the labor, right? And what I mean by the labor is like cloud resources. So uh, from the salary prospect, it's also differ company by company, but mm -hmm. I like I would say like minimum is start from 75 and it goes based on your experience and the area of expertise. If you're in networking side, if you're in security side, it's more, right? If you're a business analyst, then it's a decent as well. So it's it's very different, but I would say around 70, 75, it start from there, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's it for our today's talk, Bhavesh. And thanks a lot for sparing your time. And I think it will provide a good overview of the Canadian IT industry and Canadian cloud industry to the audience. Yeah. And in case they have any particular question, they can definitely comment down in the comment section and we will answer them all. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having me, Sahil. Thanks Thank a you. lot. So guys, this was today's video and I hope you have learned a lot from this video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more such informative videos. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.